So again, I'm going to be discussing about the coach handbook. I dropped the link in the chat or uh, the chat. Um, just so you know, the coach's handbook is a live document. So what's going to happen is that it's going to continue um, changing and updating as the year goes because there's a lot of things that we're going to be putting in there. So let me just share my screen. This is the coach handbook. This is created by me, uh, my co-coach, and uh, uh, Lakina, and also Garrett. We put this up together as we were planning for this uh, training. Uh, there's also going to be activities for the students because we're also thinking about what if we do virtual. So there has to be offline and online activities that kids can do. So for this coach's handbook, I'm just going to discuss and show you the um, uh, table of contents. What is in this handbook? Just so you know, we put this together because we experienced being a first year coach and we really didn't know. Well, for me at least, I really didn't know what I was doing. And I, I'm always wishing that there is something that I could look for and there's so many things in the internet, but it's really not answering my question. And so here we put together how to build um, the FLL table. There's a link, there's a video. There are four robot design, but we'll be updating uh, other designs as we find it, especially when the season is here already and we know. Uh, we're also going to be uh, adding here attachments that we can use. But so far, the robot design that are here will be the um, driving base. I called it the destroyer just because it destroys everything that it passes. That's why it's destroyer. And then we also have the second one, um, design instruction. It's for the, the one that I showed you, the box uh, design. And then uh, it also has our modified design. This is our winning um, robot. It's very basic, but because of the simple attachment that we used, we got a score highest 375 but the goal was 440 but we had errors so um we got um some deductions and then as i move uh please holler if i talk too fast so i'll slow down a little bit and then it also has the programming environment the three programming environments so that you can check it out it's not complete yet but it has to basic especially just to teach the students how to start. And then, trust me, students will figure it out themselves how to program it once they know what their basic or what the basic is needed for programming. So there's the EV3G, which is the block, oh well, the, the usual block. It discusses everything, parts, because students will ask, what is this, what is this? And so you will have basic knowledge of, okay, that's the menu, please make sure you call it as the menu. This is your brick information, hardware page, the palette, the canvas, so that you have one language when you're doing your programming. And then it also has um, the Scratch. This is the updated one for the um, EV3 Mindstorm, and this is for Mac. It also has information for the Spike, and then programming environment for Spike. It also has um, some practices that you can do, information about the palettes. Everything is here. And going back, it also has the information for the FLL tournament. Now, it's already discussed in module one, two, and three, but we put it here as well. And then um, there's, here's one thing that um, I practiced is naming all the components and the elements. The reason why I did this is because when we started, can you get me the thingy? And the other thingy place and the kids were like uh what thingy are you talking about oh you know the thingy the black one the long three whatever and so we started naming our components uh there are naming uh conventions here but you can uh you can change this this is an example the real name is the long peg with bushing but it's too long kids don't want to say the long peg with bushing place so we call it okay get me the torch place because it looks like a torch Another one is the half bushing, and every time my kids will uh, talk about, we, we attach to bushing, and then the parents would hear it, would hear them talking about bushings, 
they will think, or the parents will think that, are you doing cars? Because you're talking about pushing. And we often would say, oh, because they're engineers, so they have to do it. And so uh, there are also exercises that you can do, such as activities to practice with if the, if the, uh, um, the challenges are not out yet. You can do robot activities and team activities. These are just some suggestions. If you give or when you give more suggestions for us, then we will put it here. We'll put here the goals, the directions, how to debrief, and some examples. But also, there's the robot activities, uh, approximately 12 that we did. First one is, okay, let's practice how to move forward. This is your objective. What's the direction? You're not teaching your kids. You're going to just let them be. And the, uh, the, the good thing about this is that when you pair them, especially with one person who is already more familiar, then they will have more chance to really learn from uh, the expert. Just like what we're doing right now when we did your grouping, that it's not all new coaches in one room, but there are expert coaches already, because you are a second year or third year coach, and then there's the first year coach. So as you collaborate, then make sure that they write their observations for this activity. Other activities that you will see, um, using sensors, doing the climb, following the line, cage break. Um, we just named this this way because it's just funny, but you can name it however you want to name it. And then this is the amazing race. This is what the, the, the one that I really, really like uh, simply because it's, it's the time for them to use the loop and uh, also um, uh, the switch, which is really fun for them. And so also in this handbook, you'd also have resources for coach planning strategies coach tournament preparation. There are also some templates. There's also FAQs. I already have information for the uh, Southern California region. So the FAQs for Southern California is there and I'm looking for other regions or states so that I could put it there. And so it's just, it's just not one region because states and regions may have different rules or different um, questions that they ask so that everything is there. Uh, this one, my contact, I put it here, it's because when you go to a um, tournament, you'll be meeting a lot of coaches. And sometimes you will forget, who was that coach again? So this is just one way to make sure that you remember the coaches, their contact numbers, because it's a community. So you can always contact and ask them uh, questions. And then there's also the other resources, which as we discussed, modules one, two, and three, uh, as you can hear, Garrett and Lakina, they're giving resources, so it's also going to be added there. I would just like to emphasize coach planning strategies. Um, there might be a lot of things that you would like to add, so please make sure you inform us so that we can put here. This is not one, one size fits all, but this is one way to start so that, especially for the first year teachers, you can check on, uh, you can check in this handout or handbook that is, so that you know where to start at least. And then when you face your kids, when you are in front of your kids, you know what you're doing and you know how to discuss it. Any questions? If we going once, twice, three times, Thank you for making sure that you're using your learner's hat while I'm using my too fast talking hat. I really appreciate it. Thank you.